Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode in My Spine World. Today I will be discussing on the biomechanics of pedicle screw based instrumentation. Use of pedicle screw systems for spinal stabilization has become increasingly common in spine surgery. A variety of pedicle screw systems have been described and new systems are being developed every day. The technique and principle of screw placement as well as anatomical landmarks of screw placement, however, are common to all systems. Descriptions of use of a bone screw to obtain internal spinal fixation at the time of fusion has been around since 1944. Roy Camille was the first to use a pedicle screws connected to a dorsal plate. Over the years, pedicle fixation systems proved to be biomechanically superior for segmental fixation. In this video, I'll be talking about the biomechanics of these pedicle screw based instrumentation. I will be talking about the biomechanics in three separate headings. One is the characteristics of the screw itself, techniques of insertion of pedicle screw, and various augmentation techniques. Now let's talk about various screw characteristics. Now let's analyze what are the characteristics of a pedicle screw itself. The screw in essential consists of a head, neck, and a body. The body can be conical or can be cylindrical. It has an outer or a major diameter and an inner or a minor diameter. And the difference between the outer and the inner diameter is the thread depth. The pitch of the thread is the distance between the crest of the two adjacent threads. Now let's see how a screw characteristic can affect the biomechanics of a pedicle screw. Now let's go analyze what's the pull out strength of a pedicle screw with respect to the design of a pedicle screw. When a pedicle screw is pulled out, the bone between the crest of the thread is typically fractured. The quantity as well as the quality of the bone between the threads is important. So a larger outer diameter, a smaller inner diameter, a shorter pitch and stronger bone increase the pull out strength. Of all this, the outer diameter is the most important factor in determining the pull out strength. Tapping, however, is thought to reduce the pull out strength, especially in osteoporotic bones. Morphology of the pedicle itself also affects the pull out strength of the screw. There are studies which prove that the pedicle of the spine is more important in resisting pull out or cut out than the vertebral body itself. About 60% of the screw pull out strength and 80% of longitudinal stiffness depend on the pedicle rather than the vertebral body itself. So one thing to note is that in osteoporosis, however, the cortex of the pedicle is thinner and the bone mineral density is reduced. Pedicle screw with a diameter larger than the endosteal diameter of the pedicle will either fracture the pedicle or cut out either medially or laterally. After we have analyzed the pull-out strength of pedicle screw, let's go on to analyze how insertional torque affects the biomechanics of a pedicle screw. Many surgeons prefer a pedicle screw with a high insertional torque. That is, it gives them a good tactile feedback of bony purchase when you insert the screw. For the same thread design and size, insertional torque is directly related to bone mineral density or the quality of the bone. There is a positive correlation between bone mineral density and the maximum torque required to insert a pedicle screw. In other words, a better quality bone would give you a much better feedback compared to an osteoporotic bone. Now let's go on to see what affects the fatigue strength of a pedicle screw based system. Whereas the pull out strength depends on the outer diameter of the pedicle screw, it is the inner diameter that is most important dimension when considering its fatigue strength. There are biomechanical studies out there which actually shows that the fatigue strength increase almost 100% following just a 27% increase in the inner diameter. And of the pedicle screw, the neck is the weakest part of a monoaxial screw and the coupling between the polyaxial head and the screw itself was the weakest part of a polyaxial screw. There are various designs that are available for pedicle screw based system in the market today. Let's analyze some of these designs and how they affect 
the biomechanical stability of the particular screw-based system. There are bushing augmented screws in order to improve the load-bearing capacity of the particle screw. There are screws with dual core diameter in which the inner diameter is actually thickened around the neck to improve the fatigue strength and breakage of the pedicle screw. There are double threaded screws which facilitate faster insertion of a pedicle screw. There are also double lead and dual thread near the pedicle area which can provide higher insertional torque which many surgeons believe can lead to higher pullout strength. However, Higher pull out strength has not yet been proven in a biomechanical study for these designs. Now here's an example of some of the various designs that I talked about. So here you have a dual core diameter which is thickened around the neck of the screw and you have dual thread systems. So you have a shorter pitch here near the pedicle and you have a longer pitch which engages the vertebral body. Now based on the inner core of the pedicle screw itself, it can be either conical or cylindrical. The one, the picture shown here is the cylindrical design and one shown in B is your conical design. Now which is biomechanically better is still controversial. But one thing is proven and the biggest concern of using the conical screw is the decreasing pull-out strength, especially when it needs to be backed up. There are various biomechanical studies which show that even with a half turn of back out of 180 degrees, significantly reduce the pull-out strength of a conical screw. After we have analyzed the various designs of pedicle screw and how it affects the biomechanical stability, let's go on to analyze how an insertion technique itself can affect the various pedicle screw based systems biomechanical stability. When it comes to insertion technique, and when inserting a pedicle screw, keeping the dorsal cortex intact is an important method for solid fixation of the screw. And also, tapping a pedicle screw before insertion improves the trajectory of the screw. However, screws placed into untapped holes have a higher pull-out strength. Hence, surgeons do away with tapping, especially in osteoporotic bones. Generally, same size tapping is not recommended as it reduces the purchase of the screw but under tapping by one millimeter is thought to be safe and conserves almost the same pull out strength as an untapped screw hole. But most importantly is not to manipulate the screws excessively because insertion, back out and reinsertion of the screws lead to a decrease in insertional torque and pull out strength. It is known that the dorsal vertebral cortex contributes 26% of the overall pull-out strength at the screw bone interface. The trabecular bone situated in the center of the pedicle is surrounded by a layer of subcortical bone with a greater BMD, which in turn is enveloped by a shell of cortical bone. And the BMD significantly increases from the center to the outside and this increase is more profound in normal compared with an osteoporotic bone. Hence, purchase of the screw in denser subcortical bone is desirable in order to increase its stability. Hence, increased screw size and pedicle fill are believed to positively affect the overall fixation stiffness. So here's a graph of a typical load displacement curve showing how dorsal cortex removal can affect the pull-out strength of a pedicle screw. After we have gone through the insertion technique, let's see which is the best trajectory for better biomechanical stability for a pedicle screw based system. Convergence of a pedicle screw by 30 degrees in the coronal plane can increase a pull-out strength by 28%. However, insertion of the screws without convergence is more stable in terms of a longitudinal linkage. However, with better designs of the screw, with various degrees of freedom, can bypass some of these shortcomings. However, a laterally directed cortical bone trajectory was found to have similar biomechanical characteristics to the more traditional medial trajectory of a pedicle screw-based system. 
and this cortical trajectory is especially effective in poorly trabeculated osteoporotic bone. Now how about the insertion depth of the pedicle screw? About 80% penetration depth or passing the neurocellular junction as depicted in the picture is considered sufficient. There are studies which showed that 80% penetration is 32% stronger than a 50% penetration and up to 75% of maximum insertional torque can be achieved with the engagement of the neurocentral junction. Now let's go on to the last topic uh, for biomechanics of this pedicle screw based system which is the salvage techniques for pedicle screws or pedicle screw augmentation techniques. Salvage techniques or augmentation techniques are used especially when you're doing a revision surgery or in severely osteoporotic patients. The various techniques that are available are cement augmentation, use of additional hooks and wires, larger expandable screws or hydroxyapatite coated screws, extra pedicular screws or even double pedicle screw has been described. Comparing a larger diameter screw with a polymethyl methacrylate or a cement augmented screw showed that the larger screw had a higher construct stiffness than a cement augmented screw. Now how about pull out strength of cemented solid screw versus a fenestrated pedicle screw in an osteoporotic bone? There are biomechanical studies which have done and analyzed the pull out strength of a cemented solid versus a fenestrated pedicle screw in osteoporotic vertebrae. The analysis of the post-operative CT scan showed that the fenestrated screws used with holes near the screw tip provided an even distribution of the cement circumferentially around the screw and not predominantly at the screw tip in the anterior part of the vertebral body as observed with some solid screws. Hence in that way fenestrated screws had a better grip and better distribution of cement. And the pull out strength of the solid screw was greater when both sides of the vertebrae were cemented. This effect appeared predominantly for vertebrae with cement volumes of 3 milliliters, in which the cement clouds from both pedicle screws were merged as one. Cement cloud merging is considered definitely to be advantageous as long as it is not connected or prone to increase leakage of the cement, as shown in the picture. Polymethyl methacrylate or PMMA is still widely used but there are certain dangers associated with uh, PMMA and these have prompted the development of bioabsorbable cement based on calcium sulfate, calcium phosphate, hydroxyapatite which has the same favorable biomechanical properties and high osteoconductivity while discharging less heat than PMMA. And even with PMMA, pull-out strength of the screw was improved if the screw was inserted while the PMMA was in doughy state rather than after it had hardened. And pull-out strength from a bioabsorbable cement at different timings showed that augmentation power increases up to 4 minutes after the injection of calcium phosphate cement but decreases after 4 minutes time. Now let's analyze various biomechanical properties of different pedicle screw based constructs. There are studies which compared the angular range of movement and neutral zone of six different types of constructs. And these studies showed that unilateral short fixation was the least stable. And after extending the construct by one more level above and below, the mean range of motion across the pathological level was decreased by 56%. And different studies which studied the bending moments of the medical screw as a function of the sagittal angle of insertion concluded that screws angled cephalard developed a greater mean intrapedicular bending moment when compared with screws which were inserted caudal or parallel to the superior end plate. Hence, cephalard insertion should be avoided because of an increased risk of early fatigue or failure of the pedicle screw based system. Various pedicle screw constructs with regards to axial insertion angle of the pedicle screw were also studied and a straight screw insertion with no convergence provided a more stable longitudinal construct. However, pull-out strength of the screw was better when you inserted 
at an angle of at least 30 degrees from the coronal plane. Hence, some of the authors advocated the trajectory of the pedicle screw should be parallel to the mid sagittal line rather than along the axis of the pedicle. Now, how about transverse connectors? Biomechanical testing has shown that only axial rotation stability improves significantly with the addition of transverse connectors. And the greater stability can be obtained with two transverse connectors rather than just one. And there are studies which show the ideal position of the transverse connector is one in the middle and the other at the proximal one eighth position of the longitudinal rod. However, the one in the middle sometimes can become a difficulty especially when you're doing a tumor surgery where the middle transverse connector can interfere with future imaging. Studies have consistently proven that true transverse connectors are better than one in giving more rigidity to the construct. Transverse connectors are particularly used in cases of anterior column instability including fracture or corpectomy and when correcting of rotational deformities. Let me come to the take home message from this talk. Before you insert a pedicle screw, know your patient and know the anatomy of the pedicle. Study the pedicle anatomy carefully on your pre op CT scan or an MRI scan. Be familiar with various pedicle screw designs available in the market and choose the one that best suit the patient. In general, a larger outer diameter, a smaller inner diameter, a shorter pitch and a stronger bone increases the pull-out strength of the pedicle screw. Pay very close attention to the insertion depth and the insertion technique, especially in preserving the dorsal cortex, under tapping the pedicle screw and be mindful of the trajectory of the pedicle screw. Also be familiar with various salvage techniques available, including cement documentation techniques and also when and where to use a transverse connectors. Hope this talk has been useful to you and see you soon with another episode in My Spine World. Thank you for watching and stay safe.